when you were going between the T350 um, and the Alessi model, when you were comparing the two, what was what did you find? I found that the, the T350, you know, I had a couple different setups for probably it six months or so, very, very different setups, trying to suit my needs as a player, uh, orchestral player, chamber player, um, you know, everyday teacher teaching lessons and want something that I can just pick up off the trombone stand and be able to demonstrate. Um, and sometimes for me, the, the T350 setups I thought were not quite as flexible as, as what I'm holding now. Um, with the T350 setups, the reason I kept coming back in is because I kept wanting, you know, the holy grail of, of trombones. And the, the needs, um, or the, the playing that I do, and what is demanded of me um, at the university, as well as my freelance career, I needed something just overall um, that I can take and adapt to any musical setting. And I think, uh, well, I know I've found it with this. And so for me, this horn uh, allows me the flexibility so I'm comfortable uh, sitting in a brass quintet, uh, comfortable sitting in a, uh, in a large orchestra, and comfortable playing solo repertoire on it. Have you adjusted the pillars for each gig? Or the not per se, not, not yet. Um, what I have done is found, um, just through recording myself, found a couple of pillars that uh, I've used as my, as my go-to's. Why do you record yourself? <sighs> it's the best teacher you can ever have. Um, I record myself so I can, you know, dissect my own playing. Um, all of my teachers throughout my career have told me, record yourself, record yourself, record yourself. And so naturally, I did it because they told me to, but now I do it because it's my teacher. It's how I learn, it's how I adapt and make adjustments that are necessary. And it's something that I uh, enforce with my students on a, uh, on a daily basis. Do you often find what's happening from the recording is different than your own perception of Absolutely, and uh, I think when I, when I got this horn, what I thought I sounded like um, was a lot different than what was on the recording. Um, what I thought was coming out uh, of the bell was probably a little bit um, smaller, more compact sound than I was getting on the, uh, the T350. Uh, but when I would go and I would listen to this particular horn, um, the effort that I was putting in didn't really match the uh, quality, width, and, and beauty of sound that I was getting or hearing on the uh, recording. So again, just a, a very efficient, um, a very efficient horn. Which is what we were going for. We had we have the T three fifty. We have uh, a great design there that's been so successful since 1989, since its inception. And honestly, I'm very terrified of changing that because it has been successful for so many years. Now we have those, that platform. We, we wanted to create something entirely different. I think we've done that. Absolutely. Now what I'm going to do is go to the long copper in the same setup as the nickel. And so it does have an absorptive quality to the response, but you can get thicker sound qualities within part of the, the, the overtone structure. So now, I have a copper in the middle, number three, and I have the long copper in the hole closest to the bell all the way in. Thoughts? That's a lot tighter. 
Yes, as we go <laughs> as this way towards the bell, the sound starts coming in. The main reason we have put this off as long as we have was trying to figure out a way we could explain this to you without coming off as crazy. So this is our attempt. I went to copper, third hole, all the way towards the bell. Now, from my perspective, and I, I listen to people all the time, I start hearing a little bit of tension coming into the sound now. I feel it getting into his chest and into his, into his throat region. I mean, is that what you're, you're feeling? Absolutely. I'm having to work a little bit harder to just, just to play. To get the air flow going. Now, here's the thing. Every player needs a certain rate of flow of air. And this might be great for another player, but not for Mike right now. And so the rate of flow, it's constricting for him at this point. Now I have stayed away from the front pole, which I've, I said earlier was like a lead pipe pole. The reason for that is I wanted to adjust the sound and show you those differences without changing so much of the feel on Mike's face. I wanted to keep certain things at least consistent and just uh, uh, adjust the sound. Um, the reason being, you don't change mouthpieces ten times in a day. When you start changing the lead pipe side of things, it changes the feel pretty drastically. Absolutely. At times. And, and so I'm always cautious when um, adjusting towards the player's um, face. I try and find what works quickly and then leave that alone so that becomes home base. Whenever I always tell people when they first get their Alessi, find the one that works for you in the lead pipe hole and then go, go from there. Or if nothing works there, then work your way through the sound. Um, or if the horn works great without any pillars, fantastic.